Hello class, welcome to Knitting 101. Yeah, so the plan is, is to help you guys. Um, if you guys are just starting, you don't know where to start, I hope that I can be here and help you, guide you through the process because when I was knitting, I was really inexperienced. I had, not, I had no idea what I was doing. I had to learn a lot of it online. And I don't think a lot of online resources really guide you to where you need to be. It's all a lot of like snippets of here and there. You really have to search for things. But look no further because this is the video that's going to help you with what you need to start knitting. But the Discord and the Twitch is up. I am so happy about how things have been going so far. If you want to join the server, the link is in the description. If you want to see more videos, just hit the subscribe button so you can see when I post. I kind of want to make this a series so hopefully like if this does really well I might do like how to knit like a sweater, how to knit a vest, how to knit a cardigan and all that stuff so so just let me know in the comments. If you're ready for the video let's get to it. Knitting. Honestly can I explain it? Not really. The things that you need to knit you need sticks. Honestly you could knit with pencils if you really wanted to nothing is holding you back. Okay so there's two different types of knitting materials that you need to for your knitting. You can either get straight needles. So these are just straight normal knitting needles. You can probably get these at your local craft store or Michaels. I hate these. I They're just so bulky. Like They're so bulky. Like when you're knitting, you're very I don't know how to explain it, but it feels like you're holding oars. What I actually prefer to use are circular needles. You have the same thing but they connect at the ends. So instead of just knitting flat from side to side, you can actually knit it in the round. So as you can see, she forms a circle. You can knit essentially a tube or a circle. You can always just knit with your straight needle and then sew it together, but if you use a circular needle, it's just so seamless. There's no reason to not do it. You just, it's, it's just two for one. Okay, you have needles. So needles come in different sizes. So you can get really tiny ones and a huge one. It changes the spacing of your yarn. So if you knit with a really big needle and a really thin yarn, you're gonna get really spaced out stitches. Versus if you knit with a really small needle, there's gonna be less spaces, it's gonna be super tight, and you're gonna get a really fine foin. You're gonna get a really fine piece. So usually needles range from two millimeters to like 20 millimeters. Like you, it's such a range, it's really up to you what you want to get. I would recommend getting something that's in your taste. So, if you want to knit super chunky wool sweaters, go with really big needles. If you want really fine, really delicate, you know what to do. Yarn also comes in different sizes. So something I didn't know when I was beginning, I was just buying yarn like left and right. Like I was like, ooh, she's cute, let me buy her, you know? I wasn't really thinking about it, you know? Like, like you, like who thinks about like the sizes of the yarn? So we have this humongous boy. So if you look at the label, you will see there. There's this section that tells you exactly what this yarn is about. So this is a, a size three, which is a light yarn. This is a crochet hook. This is a knitting needle. It will tell you a recommended size of what you should use for this yarn. So. Usually all yarns come with this. If they don't, sketch. But in the US, you guys are so weird. You guys have different needle sizes, so I hate that. Like, you guys have like actual numbers where we actually say the millimeter. So if you are American, you will have to like convert, but usually they have both on it, so no worries. I found this chart that tells you exactly what you need, so screenshot it right now. Let's dive in. Let's dive deep, okay? <laughs> The basics we're going to do, we're going to learn how to cast on, we're going to learn how to knit and purl, and then we're going to learn how to cast off. If you want to start a row, start off with a slip knot. So a slip knot just helps you create first stitch, which you put on your needle. I have this for demonstration. If you have the end of your yarn, you crisscross it, make a loop, okay? You take your finger, take the part. All right, let me explain that again. So have your yarn you cross it okay make sure when you're crossing it you cross it like this so now I'm going to the hole I'm going through the hole I take your opposite thread take the opposite thread and I pull through there is an itty bitty slip knot so you slip it through your needle you have your first stitch okay cute little cutie girl Okay, so 
I'm gonna show you three different methods. This is the first one I had ever learned. It's honestly horrible. <laughs> Don't do it, but I'm just showing you for the ease of it. I think it's called the wrap around method, but I'll, essentially all you do is wrap it around your thumb and then you wrap it again around the needle. I find when you have to knit these cast-ons that it, it creates this weird like long thread in between so every time your yarn gets longer and longer in between and it gets really difficult in my opinion so don't recommend. I wrap it around two needles because I want the stitches to be loose enough for me to knit through. Sorry if this is super boring, I tried to put in at least two tries of everything I did just so you can see, make sure you get it. If you don't, that's totally fine, just go backwards and rewatch or put a slow-mo. Okay, this one is also cute but I don't use it as much. Essentially, you have that slip knot and you're going to knit. So, you put the needle through the thread and you're going to like essentially knit. Uh, so to knit, you put your needle through the left side of the thread, you wrap around the yarn, Okay, so this is me wrapping the yarn around. You pull through, you have a loop. You wrap the loop around that thread. And so that creates a stitch. I recommend not being super tight with your yarn just because if it's super tight, it's really hard to put the needle through. So try to be as loose as possible without it being uh, like messy. This is my preferred method. It's probably one of the more confusing ones, but I think it's really cool when I do it. Maybe that's just honestly super weird. I am also at fault at not measuring how long the yarn should be, and then I have to redo it, so it's honestly super sad. It depends on how many stitches you're gonna put onto your sticks, but you wanna make sure it's pretty long. Okay, this one honestly took me a little while to get, but you have a tail side, like a tail end, and you have your yarn and you want to wrap the tail end around your index finger, uh, see as I'm trying to demonstrate, and then you want to wrap the other, your thumb around the other yarn. It kind of creates this like V kind of shape, and so uh, what you want to do is wrap the needle around the, the yarn that is underneath the thumb, you go under and over and then you're going to you're going to go over and under the thread that is by the yarn and then go through this like loop by the thumb okay if you know how to do the knit cast on you essentially know how to knit so what you have to do is put your needle through the left side of the yarn wrap around pull through until you see a loop and then push it off of that needle Again, sorry if my explanation makes no sense. I feel like visually you can just see it way better. Like I learned this when I was in grade four and you just slowly kind of get the hang of it. So maybe, I am, maybe I'm underestimating how difficult it is actually to start learning to knit at an older age. But yeah, as you can see, there is essentially like a loop that you're just putting your needle through and you're putting more loops through it. I don't know. Is that silly? Oh my god, people are gonna hurt me in the comments. Like literally everyone's just gonna be like, you're so silly. Like you don't know how to explain this at all. Why are you even doing a tutorial? Also, I'm left-handed, so I'm knitting right-handedly. So it's honestly kind of confusing to explain it. But anyway... Once all your needles are on the right side, you're going to take the right needle, switch hands, and then essentially do the same thing again. Okay, so we just finished one row and we're moving on to the next row. We are actually working on the back side, whereas in the first row, was the, it was the front side. Again, you just want to find the loop and thread your needle through that. Ugh, the infamous pearl. So we are going to purl on a green yarn just so you can see the difference so with purling instead of putting your needle through the left side of the yarn you're going to put it through the right side too so yeah as i demonstrate this is knit we don't want to do that no 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 you want to go through the other side okay sorry if i just blew your mind it's honestly kind of hard to grasp but you just always want to make sure that your yarn is in the front so you're going to be wrapping everything in the front.
yeah as you can see I'm taking the working yarn and we're going to wrap it around in the front pull through and then kind of push off okay so you're going to put the needle through the right side upwards you're going to wrap your needle in the front and then kind of pull back find your loop and just let it fall off Okay, so I finished two swatches of the purling both sides and knitting both sides and as you can see this is known as the garter stitch and you'll see that doing both of them you get the same thing. Yeah, so this isn't like a super, super intense tutorial on each single thing. I'm just telling you the basics of what you need to know and I'll link videos specifically that showcase how to do all these techniques if you feel like I went too fast or I didn't do it very clearly, just so you know exactly what's happening. Because I feel like a lot of videos are just like one minute of just showing you how to do one stitch. But knowing how to do that stitch tells me nothing. Okay, so when you're knitting, I didn't realize this, I didn't know this was a thing. It's also a thing for crochet, but everyone is different. When you're hand making something, obviously everyone is going to be different. Not one thing is gonna be exactly the same. You could follow the same pattern that someone else does, but it could be totally different because everyone has a different yarn tension. So what this means is when you're wrapping your yarn around the needle, you could be wrapping it tighter or looser than someone else. So. I didn't realize this. I was like, what? Like, it should all be the same because I'm using the same size needle, but that's totally wrong. So that's why people tell you the gauge. So that's like kind of a standard. So if you knit looser than the gauge that it specifies, you need to change either the yarn that you're using or the needle that you're using. But I learned this the hard way. When I was knitting a hat for the first time, I was following the pattern to the T because that's what I thought. Because if this is the instructions, this is exactly what I need to follow. But, sorry, but I had a different tension from the pattern. So when I finished it completely, my hat was big. My hat was ginormous. And I was like, what the hell? I, I, I like, what the hell? I did this completely exactly what it told me. Why is it so off? Gauge is the answer. Looking at gauge really just saves your life. So once you pass on how many like stitches you want, you're good to go. Gucci Gucci, Gucci gang, we good to go. Then you can start knitting or purling. So knitting and purling, oh, honestly, I don't even know how to explain knitting and purling. When you're knitting, there's going to be a right side and a wrong side. So like a front and a back. So for example, another example, I have this. I am knitting this thing in my bob. Who knows what I'm knitting, but she's a swatch. So I'm knitting this. If you can see this pattern, I have no idea. Honestly, I hope this really, I hope this makes sense to you. So this is my front. If you look at the back, it's completely different. When you're knitting, you are knitting the front and then you knit the back. Okay, this is where I'm going to just blow your mind even more. So stockinette stitch is essentially you knit one side and then you're going to purl the other side. So instead of just knitting, knitting, knitting continuously or purling, 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 you're gonna switch it up every row. Okay, so as you can see, this is the second row. I'm doing the purl side and it just, uh, it just makes the most beautiful pattern you'll ever see. It's honestly one of the most I want to say most common because everyone does it it's usually on all your sweaters and it's the one that i use for like um, all my patterns so far okay i'm knitting this side um again you don't have to watch this all the way through if it's too much for you just practice the first section and then if you finally get a grasp of it continue on with the video yeah so as you can see stockinette kind of curls in which is not my favorite thing ever but what can you do i'm trying to emphasize the v's that form because those are each of your stitches hopefully you guys can see the difference between the stockinette and the garters Okay, we are switching it up. 
So if you know how to knit and purl, you essentially can make so many different patterns. It's honestly insane. Like look up the seed stitch and like the moss stitch. I didn't do it in these videos, but like, holy moly. So I'm going to show you how to do the rib. So rib is essentially, instead of just knitting the entire row, you're knitting and purling. So you knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. You can also do two by two, so like knit two, purl two, but I'm just gonna show you this one. This is what I usually do on my sleeves or the neckline. It just gives a really nice ribbing look. Can I really describe ribbing? No, you kind of have to see it. It just creates V's that are kind of separated and then they bunch in together, so they're kind of, it's like, you'll see it in the comparison, but it's, it's smaller than what a stockinette would be. Okay, hopefully you can tell that there are different stitches. <laughs> okay, so if you knit, purl, knit, purl on the front side, you have to purl, knit, purl, knit on the back side. Because in order to create that beautiful V shape, you have to do opposites on the front and the back. I'm literally the worst person. Guess what type of stitch this is. Okay. So now that you know how to knit and purl, that's when you learn how to cast off. So casting off is really simple. It's, it's honestly like the funnest thing to do. I don't know why. Okay, so in order to cast off, it really depends on what stitch you're doing. You can actually cast off purl wise or knit wise or whatever. So as you can see, I'm doing knit cast off. And so you, all you have to do is knit two you use your other needle, you're going to loop it around that, that first loop and pull it over the needle. So you're only left with that one. You knit another one so that you always have two on the needle and then you're gonna pull it over. Super fun and fresh. When you get to the last one, you wanna cut your working yarn and then pull it through the last loop and then it creates a wonderful ending. Yeah, so hopefully this was helpful i have no idea but i really hope this helped if it doesn't from this video you should know how to make a square a rectangle any sort of like box shape and once you know how to do that you can knit a scarf scarves are really chill they're so chill oh my god like i know i've been there the first thing i knit i don't even have anymore because it was just unusable. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to see more knitting tutorials, please just let me know in the comments below. If you don't, then, oh my god, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching.